Hey, Brenton here from Effortless Swimming. In today's video, I'm gonna share three things with you that made a big difference with improving my catch, which effectively improved my speed as well. Now, as you know, the catch is the most important part of the stroke that we really wanna get right. And if you haven't seen our videos in the past about the catch, I'll just explain which part of the stroke it is. It is this part from here. So we call the catch, that's the start of it from when you're at full extension down to this position around there. So I like to call that the catch. So that is all we're talking about. Now, the reason this part of the stroke is so important is because that's gonna set you up in a position to then be able to generate some propulsion and have a good amount of surface area to work with in order to do that. So that is the catch. Now, the three things that really made a difference for me was when I got filmed a number of years ago, one of the things that I noticed was that my hand was way up near the surface. So when I was reaching forwards, my hand was right up here near the surface. Now that created a lot of extra drag, which I could get rid of if I got my hand down deeper. But I thought that in order to have a good catch, you need to be up near the surface where you start it. And as you go through the catch, I thought high elbow meant elbow right near the surface. That's not the case, but that's what I thought a number of years ago. And so the two things that are happening there is that my hand was up really high, which is not a, a comfortable or a strong position to be in, and it slows you down. So one of the things I had to do was get the fingertips down to underarm depth a lot quicker or a lot sooner. Now you can see here, it doesn't get there immediately, but it does not take long to get down to that depth there. So that's one thing that has made a big difference in increasing my speed is getting the fingertips to underarm depth there. So I, I like to call that the starting catch position. And if you know that your hand hovers up too high or you go too deep there, then a really simple drill you can do is side kicking drill. So kicking on the side with one arm out in front, one arm by the side, and just kicking in that position. And when you do that, make sure that your hand is at this depth here because most people, when we're running clinics, is most people tend to have their hand way up here near the surface because that's what kind of feels a bit more natural, even though it's not the optimum position to be in. Now, when it comes to the actual catch itself, we wanna to get to a position that we'd call a high elbow catch. But the way that we determine that or define it is when you finish the catch, which is right here, if we draw a line from your shoulder to your fingertips, is that elbow above that straight line? Now I can't draw it on this app here, but you can see that elbow would be just above that, that imaginary straight line from the shoulder to the fingertips. Now that's a high elbow catch. I used to think that a high elbow meant close to the surface, but it's not the case. Um, it just means is that elbow above that straight line. Now, it doesn't mean that the more extreme you go with that position, as in if this elbow is way, way out in front, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a better catch because a lot of people that I work with are adult triathletes or open water swimmers. They don't necessarily have incredible mobility through the shoulders. And so for them to get to somewhere really extreme with, that, with their arm in this position, it's not going to be strong, comfortable or sustainable. So getting to a position a little bit more like this, where you can see where my arm is there, that's gonna be better for most of the people that, that I would typically work with, which is adult triathletes and, uh, and open water swimmers. So um, that's all we need to get to, is somewhere in that sort of range. Now, one of the things that um, was happening with me there is that because I was very close to the surface, I thought I was getting a high elbow, but I actually compromised the position because it meant I was too shallow through this part of the stroke. So by, for me, going a little bit deeper with my catch and just setting it up in a way to get there, that made a big, big difference. Now, the third thing that really made a difference for me was using the catch as the setup phase of the stroke, as in don't go for the power there. Because one of the things that I was trying to do early on was that I thought I had to pull hard and fast in the beginning to swim fast. But the thing is, going from there, down to there, that is not a strong movement. If you think of your shoulders position, looking up, you wouldn't be able to sort of pull much weight in that position, particularly compared to as you move a little bit further under the body, so through through here. But one of the things I was trying to do was kind of rip hard at it, but it's wasted effort. So what I did instead was I used it as the setup phase of the stroke. So all I wanted to do was get somewhere in that high elbow range. So I really backed off the power there gave myself a lot of surface area to work with. And then I just looked to accelerate a little bit through the stroke. So from here, just gently accelerated through the stroke 
and then exited past the hip there. So I'll play it through. You can see how it goes a little bit slower through the setup phase and a little bit quicker at the back. And for me, what that allowed me to do was it allowed me to apply power in the power phase where you're a little bit stronger, which is through here, but it also allowed for much better timing because one of the things that you may have seen in some, you know, some other videos is when you try and pull very hard and fast out the front, it will throw your timing out. It makes it very hard to be front quadrant, which is essentially, if we were to draw a line in, in front of your head, would there be a hand or an arm in front of you at all stages through the stroke? So that's what we call front quadrant, always something out in front of your head. Now you can see I'm, I'm front quadrant here. I've kind of got a three quarter catch up type of stroke. And for me, that typically works best. Um, but if I was to pull through really fast because I'm trying to pull hard, straight away, then I wouldn't be front quadrant. Now, the thing that that changes is that typically when you're not front quadrant is you won't time the stroke very well. So we won't get the foot kicking down at the start of the catch. We won't get this connection through the, uh, the catch and the pull with the rotation of the body either. So it basically just allows you to use your body to, uh, to swim. So they're the three main changes that really made a difference for me. Now, in terms of, all right, what might it be for you? Well, if you look forwards when you're swimming and you see that your hand is up too high, then it might be something to adjust. I'd say 10% of the swimmers that I coach have a high elbow catch. So getting somewhere in this sort of range is a really important thing to do that not many people uh, are there yet. So that's worth practicing. I'll link to a video below in the description that will give you some drills and give you some good ways to go about improving that. Uh, and if you have a look in, at our um, core principle number four in our uh, Effortless Swim membership, that's where we've got all of our drills that will help you achieve a high elbow catch position, which is really the number one thing that we wanna work towards uh, in swimming. And then if you know that you try too hard through the catch, if you pull too hard, then obviously that's gonna compromise the timing and that's going to be wasted effort in a way. So that's just one of the things where you can really just back off the power a little bit through that front end of it. So they're the three things that made a big difference for me. Now, if you find uh, this video helpful and useful, feel free to share it with someone who swims as well. And uh, also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we're aiming to get to 200,000 YouTube subscribers by the end of this year. So hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get notified every time that I upload another video. So thank you for watching. Leave a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts and maybe some of those things that you've been working on with your catch. And I'll see you next week with another video.